shear and moment equations by integration. One of the outcomes for this course is to demonstrate the ability to calculate normal and shear stress and deflection in beams. Before we calculate stress in beams, we first need to find the internal shear and internal moment. The outcome of this lesson is to develop equations for internal shear and moment in a beam using integration. The rules used to develop shear and moment diagrams for beams using the graphical method can be applied to finding equations that describe the internal shear and moment in beams, especially these two equations in the box. These rules state that the shear function is the indefinite integral of the distributed load on a beam, and the moment function is the indefinite integral of the shear function. In a given problem, we know what the distributed load is on the beam. We will use it to derive the shear function, then use the shear function to derive the moment function. Let's do a little review of the direct equation method. Then we can compare the answers to the integration method. This example problem states, find functions for the internal shear and bending moment using the direct equation method. We first find the support reactions using statics. Next, we define an x-axis that runs in the direction of this beam. I choose to put the origin of the axis at point A. Then we make a theoretical cut in the beam at a distance x from the origin. We draw on the internal shear and moment arrows using the positive sign convention as previously described. Then we solve for the internal shear by summing forces in the y direction. Our answer comes out as a function of x. We solve for the internal moment by summing moments about the cut end. Again, our answer comes out as a function of x. We note that the shear function is the derivative of the moment function. Now let's repeat the problem using integration. Note that the first step will be to find the support reactions. These were already found in the previous example. We will then derive the shear function by integrating the function for the distributed load as described by this rule. What is the function for the distributed load? In this case, we have a uniformly distributed load of 20 kN per meter pointing downward. Thus, the function for the distributed load is simply a constant with a magnitude of 20. Based on the sign convention mentioned previously, a distributed load is positive when pointing upward. Since our distributed load points downward, it will be negative. I define an x-axis so that at a, x is equal to 0, and at b, x is equal to 8 meters. The selection of this origin at a is arbitrary. Now I show the distributed load as a function of x. It's just negative 20. Now I can find the shear function by integrating the distributed load function. The shear function is the indefinite integral of negative 20. Integrating gives the expression shown. Note that when taking an indefinite integral, I pick up a constant of integration. It is critical that you do not ignore this constant. We will find the integration constant by using the boundary conditions of our shear function. The boundary conditions are points where we know the value of the shear function. For this problem, we know the values for the shear at the supports. At the supports, the shear is equal to the support reactions. Here's the shear diagram for this beam. We don't need to know what the whole diagram looks like, but it is useful to think about what it will look like at the supports. We see that at point A, where x is equal to 0, the shear is equal to a positive 80 kilonewtons. So I can say that at x equals a, the function for shear in terms of x is equal to the support reaction, which is 80 kilonewtons. I apply this information by setting my shear function equal to 80 when evaluated at x equals 0. My only unknown is the integration constant, and when I solve for it, it's equal to 80. I replace the constant c in my shear equation with 80. And now I have my shear function. Note that we got the same result as the direct equation method. The units on the shear function are kilonewtons in this case. The distributed load 
has units of kilonewtons per meter, and the dx in our expression here has the same units as the x dimension of the beam, which is meters. Multiplying those together gives us kilonewtons. We can check our shear function by plugging in a value of x equals 8 meters. We get that the shear is equal to negative 80 kilonewtons, which is consistent with what we're expecting at point B. Now we find the moment function by integrating the shear function as expressed with the rule shown. The moment is equal to the indefinite integral of our shear function. Integrating gives us the expression shown. Again, don't forget the integration constant. We will solve for the integration constant using the boundary conditions of the moment function. Here is the moment diagram for the beam. I don't need to know exactly how it looks. I do need to recognize that at the supports, which are a pin and a roller, the internal moments will be zero. Or in other words, on our moment diagram, the moment will be zero at the extreme ends of our beam in this case. We can say that at x equals zero, the moment function is equal to zero. I apply this information by setting my moment function equal to zero when evaluated at x equals zero. My only unknown, again, is the integration constant, and it is equal to zero. I now have my function for the internal moment in terms of x, and note that we got the same result as the direct equation method. The units for the moment function are kilonewton meters. The shear function has units of kilonewtons, and dx in this expression has the same units as x, which is meters. Multiplying those together, we get kilonewton meters. We can check our moment function by plugging in x equals 8 meters. We get the moment is equal to 0, which is consistent with what we expect at point B. To summarize the method, find a function that describes the distributed load on the beam. Remember that distributed loads pointing downward are negative. Find the functions for shear and bending moment using the rule shown. When evaluating each indefinite integral, do not forget to include the integration constant. We solve for the integration constants using the function boundary conditions. And we're done.